In this video, I will demonstrate how you can extract insights from knowledge graphs using network science, so that you can look at a graph like this and see what are the main ideas, how they connect to one another, what are the main topical clusters, how those topical clusters interrelate, how you can generate ideas based on those topical clusters. For example, by looking at the structural gaps and thinking of a possible connection between them and then using AI to generate ideas that would link those gaps together and how you can also analyze trends in those graphs and see how a discourse evolved over time, what are the trending topics and so on. As an example, we'll be using the new graph view plugin for Obsidian from Infranodus, which you can download from infranodus.com. And a little bit about myself, I'm Dimitri, I'm the creator of Infranodus. Actually, there is the main version available here and it has uh, multiple graph analytics options and it's based on text network analysis. So it visualizes a text as a network and then calculates uh, various graph analysis metrics from it so that you can generate some really interesting insights. I've been working on it for the last 10 years and I would like to share uh, my knowledge on the subject with you because a lot of people asked about it on YouTube. Also, please subscribe to this channel so that this video can get recommended to other people interested in the same topic. So let's dive in. First of all, we will visualize a page in Obsidian using the new Infernodus plugin. I will choose a page. It's a page on gut microbiome. It's a research I'm working on. And here I just open the contextual menu and click open an Infernodus graph. And what happens is that Infernodus visualizes all the wiki links or mentions as they're called in Obsidian as the nodes and their co-occurrences are the connections. So if the same Wikilink mention appears in the same paragraph like it does here, then it's going to be visualized as a connection here, right? So for example, we have gut and they appear a lot with hypertension, but also with microbiome and so on. So that's kind of like to explain to you how that works. Once we create this representation of a text as a text network graph, uh, then we can apply various metrics to it. So one thing that everyone does all the time is to apply Force Atlas layout. To show you what Force Atlas layout is, I will go to the main version of Infernotus and show you like a circular layout. And then when you click on Force Atlas layout, what it does is that it pushes the most connected nodes, like in this case, philosophy and individual, they're, they're pushed apart from each other. And the nodes that are connected to them that form groups around those nodes are pushed closer to the most connected nodes. So this is how you get a really nice visual representation of which terms appear in the same context in this particular text, right? So if we go back to Obsidian, we will also see clusters here. For instance, we'll see that uh, kidney disease is appearing a lot with hemolytic, eramic, Shiga syndrome, then hypertension is connected more to intestinal flora and, and impairment. So you see we have those clusters of nodes that are uh, aligned next to each other and have the same color. And this is a combination of using Force Atlas layout and also community detection algorithms. I will provide a link to our research paper in the description to this video so you can get all the scientific references. But basically what it allows you to do, and this is the first thing that you can actually do when you look at the graph and you want to interpret this, is to look at the layout it uses, understand the principle that underlies this layout. In this case, it's uh, the alignment of community nodes together. And this already gives you an understanding of, of what are the topical clusters which exist in this document. So for instance, here we have uh, all those clusters listed in the topics panel, right? So when you click on microbiome diversity, this is one cluster, gut health is another, Plant fermentation is another cluster, and you see the notes highlighted. Uh, Microbiable metabolism is another cluster, and so on. If you click here, you can see more information. Uh, what are the nodes inside of those clusters, and some extra info as well. And this is uh, like a really good approach to use from network science to analyze knowledge graphs, to first understand the structure and what are the clusters that exist in this particular network. And how they also connect to one another. In fact, in Infernodus, you also have a metric that's called modularity, and that's measured in percentage, but basically it's uh, like 0.68 in this case. And here we have a little helper that says that if this measure is more than 40%, then it means that network is modular. And what that means is that the community structure is pronounced enough so that uh, the information that you get about the 
topical clusters is meaningful. If it was lower than 0.4, it means that the network is too interconnected, so we don't have really distinct clusters appearing here. Whereas in this case, we do. In fact, you will see it much better if I show all the nodes here using this knob. So then you understand that, okay, there's this cluster, then there's this one, and they're quite disconnected from one another. So this is why this measure is quite high. And this is another uh, measure that you can use from network science to analyze knowledge graphs. The higher this measure is, the more disconnected the community structure of the graph is, uh, the more you can gain from connecting those, those topical clusters together. So this is the first indication of what you can do in relation to this knowledge graph. If it's too dispersed, in this case it's quite dispersed, it means that you need to connect things. And this is what it says also here, that you need to connect it. And there are different ways to connect those ideas together. When you click on connect in the Infranode Subsidian plugin, it's going to take you to the gaps layer, and then it will identify some topics or topical clusters that you could connect. It provides the AI-generated names for them. So, for example, brain gut access and plant fermentation, seemingly unrelated topics, but this is why also this suggestion is so interesting, because it helps you connect ideas and topics that are not yet connected. So, if you think of a connection between those two topics, you will probably generate a new idea that will provide more connectivity to this particular knowledge graph, to this particular discourse. And then it means that it's probably going to be beneficial for developing it further. And if you like, you can think of a connection yourself. So for example, what I like to do is to look at the graph and to see that there is these two clusters identified, brain gut axis, gut microbiome, brain reaction, abnormal. Okay, I understand it's a connection between brain and gut and then plant fermentation, and these are like what happens to plant when we consume them and how they're being digested. And then I think of a question, how could these two topics connect to one another? Is there, for example, anything in the brain-gut connection that we can improve by consuming certain types of plants? Or how does this process work? This might direct my research to a very interesting direction that I haven't thought of yet. And this is how you can also use those knowledge graphs and and apply network science insights. So once again, you look at the structure, then you identify how dispersed it is. In this case, it's quite dispersed. You can see it both visually and by looking at the metrics here. And then if it's dispersed, then you try to connect ideas together. If on the other hand, it was too interconnected, you would want to disperse these ideas further. I actually talk about it in more detail on infranodus.com. You can actually see it here in the description of the algorithm that we use. If you click on about and then you go to cognitive variability, I write more on this subject and how this approach is actually implemented in the Infranodus recommendation algorithm. So if you're interested to learn more about the science behind it, uh, check out infranodus.com. I'll provide the link to this below. So uh, to get back here, right? So we identify the structure, the main topics, we find the gaps, we think of a connection between them. If we want, we can also send this gap to the built-in AI, and then it's going to generate an idea for us. So for example, here it's suggesting how does integrating a diet with 30 types of plants influence the interaction between gut microbiome diversity, particularly the presence of Oscillospira and Fecalibacterium prosnitsili and the brain's myelination process in vertebrates, potentially mitigating anxiety and improving insulin sensitivity. So that's like a very specific question can also be quite interesting as a research question as well. We can think of an answer to this question, or we can send it to the built-in AI and have it generate some idea for us. So that's quite interesting also how we can use the AI to help us think through this graph. So that would be the first way of using network science in order to generate insights from your knowledge graphs by looking at the structure, identifying the gaps, making connections between them. Another really interesting measure from network science that you can use to derive insights from your knowledge graphs are the individual metrics of every node in the graph. So here you get much more specific, but also the insights that you will get will be much more nuanced. I will show you how it works. First of all, you will need to click on the concepts layer of the Infranodus Subsidian Graph plugin, and it shows you the top concepts. These are the concepts of the nodes in the graph that have the highest influence. So as you can see, it shows you very quickly what the main ideas are in this graph. But how are they calculated? If you click here, you will see more information about every node, and it will explain to you how 
uh, this ranking is done. So we have two measures for each node here. Degree, that's the number of connections it has. So for example, in the case of GUT, it, it's number 28, so it has 28 connections. And between the centrality. And between the centrality is the measure of influence in the network. In technical terms, it means how often this node appears on the shortest path between any two randomly chosen nodes in the network. So if you use a social network analogy, you can think of this network of words as a social network. And the more important uh, the word or the node is, the more people it knows in the network. So those nodes that have more connections will obviously be more influential. But it's also the type of connections you have. Suppose you have a word that's connected to many different other words, but it stays local, it doesn't connect to the whole community. So that means it will have high degree, but lower between a centrality. Because between a centrality shows how important the node is for connecting uh, the different clusters together. How often does it appear between different groups of nodes, right? So if you use an analogy with social network, someone with a high degree knows a lot of people, but someone with high between a centrality knows people from many different diverse groups. And that means that this person can connect you to uh, a more diverse set of opportunities or ideas. And it's the same thing here. Between the centralities shows exactly that this, this is why we also use it to rank the nodes. Not the number of connections, but between the centrality. And as you will see here, you will also have some really interesting insights. For instance, gut uh, has a, a higher between the centrality than bacteria, even though bacteria has more connections. So if you click on bacteria, you see it connects to more nodes, but the diversity of connections that GUT has is slightly higher. It's about actually 30% higher. So that means that uh, the range of opportunities that you can get through the idea of GUT in, this, in the context of this text is much higher, right? So this is how you can also analyze this information and see, uh, you know, which words are more important and this is why we rank them like this. So, that's also why when you look at the graph, you will be able to see what are the most relevant ideas very quickly just by looking at the size of those nodes. And that's why it's important also to apply all those metrics into graphs. If you look at other graphs, like for, for instance, Juggle here, I think they just use the uh, number of connections the node has. So it doesn't really show you how relevant this node is for connecting different communities together. But here you actually can see uh, how important it is for connecting different groups of nodes together. So for example, just to show you how that works a little bit better using a whole folder, if I click on the folder here and I click open an InfraNodus graph, it's going to visualize the whole folder for me and all the pages inside. And here I can see that the uh, page of hypertension is quite an important one in my research, right? And then I also have blood pressure, which is important. That's just because I was studying it at the moment. And uh, some other stuff, like for instance here, um, in fact, I will go to the concepts and see what else, myokins. So uh, this is like a very specific terms. You see, I wouldn't maybe normally find that it's an important one because uh, it might have not so many connections, but it has high relevance because it actually connects to different groups of concepts together. So this is why it's important. And to explain to you, how it works, uh, I can also demonstrate it like this maybe. If you click, let's say, on blood pressure and endothelial, you will see that the connection between those two nodes, if it goes through some other nodes, will go through, through hypertension. This is why hypertension, it kind of always positions itself between ideas. This is why it has high between the centrality. So that's like an intuitive way to understand how this metric works. Another really useful information here are the top relations. So what are the top relations between the nodes in this whole folder on the body, right? So if I click here, I will see that uh, it's blood pressure and hypertension, snoring and hypertension, myokines and proteins, gut bacteria, deep sleep and N3 sleep. So that's interesting because I wouldn't maybe normally notice it because I don't have a specific page on that. But here, thanks to this information, I can zoom in and see what I'm writing about deep sleep and N3 sleep. And for example, it connects to arterial stiffness. And that's great because I can find really specific insights based on this information. And then once I selected them, I can either click context and see in which context those appear. So I can find the exact statements that are talking about those ideas in my notes, or I can also generate a summary using the AI to kind of see what are 
those statements without having to read through them, but just getting an AI-generated overview of all my ideas on that subject, right? So this also becomes a really nice and useful way to find out some specific ideas inside. And also you have this dot graph structure, which is basically uh, a representation of this graph, but using plain text. And that's really useful because if I copy this and then I go to chat GPT here, and I, I use the special GPT that we have, I will link to it in the description to the video, text graph diagrams, open a new one, and I just paste this graph dot structure. So I'm going to remove the rest of the stuff, the bigrams, and the information about the nodes, and just have it generate a representation for me uh, that's like a diagram. So that becomes like a, also a simplified way to represent all this stuff visually, and to also see how a machine would see this information. Because then imagine you can feed it to your model or to your AI agents, for instance, and generate some really interesting insights because it contains all the structural information on your knowledge graph. So this is why this can also be highly useful. And one other important workflow that I want to demonstrate that I have a whole video on that I will link to while uh, you're listening to this one at the top right corner of this video is the ability to actually cut off the top concepts to show what's hiding underneath. So here you have reveal underlying button and what it does, it takes the top concepts and hides them from the graph to see what are the concepts that appear behind them. And this is a really great way of cutting off the top layers of concepts in order to understand what's hiding underneath. And that's a really useful thing because by removing those ideas, you will see what's hiding behind them and kind of cut off the top layer in order to see what's hiding underneath. So that's a very useful workflow if you would like to discover uh, what's hiding behind those ideas. One last thing that I would like to demonstrate are the trends and how we can use the graph to analyze the trends. So here if I go to the gut microbiome file again and I click on trends, I will be able to see which are the topics that uh, kind of tend to emerge as the discourse evolves. And here we have one on plant fermentation. So this means these were the last ideas I was talking about. Pre prebiotic sources and microbial resistance. So that's quite interesting because I can see that towards the end of this research, I started talking about food. In fact, if you click here and then you click context, you will see where exactly uh, these ideas appear. And if I click open in context, uh, it's going to show me exactly that statement which is talking about that. So that becomes quite useful because I can see very quickly uh, where I'm talking about a certain idea. And uh, if I would like to maybe come back to this later, I can jump into it and kind of see how it evolves. And also I can actually look at the evolution of the discourse by dragging this. So I can see that at the beginning of this text I was talking about foods, shiitake, red ginseng, inflammatory, then as I went on speaking about gut microbiome, I was talking about other stuff like probiotics, pathogenic microorganisms, then gut microbiome, insulin, and then towards the end I started talking about hypertension and gut. So that's also quite an interesting way to see how you can uh, analyze the evolution of the discourse, reveal some trends inside using the graph, and then uh, this perhaps can be helpful for you if you would like to kind of pick up where you left or to develop your discourse further. So these are some of the approaches from network science that you can use. Um, in this demonstration, I use the Obsidian GraphView plugin made by Infranodus. You can also use uh, an advanced version of Infranodus here on the main site, infranodus.com, and you have much more stuff here. So for example, in the relations, you have uh, more stats on each relation. You also have the stats panel here where you can see measures like between the centrality divided by degree, which is quite interesting because it shows you influence by the number of connections it has. So it has a little bit more information about all those different metrics for each node. So if you'd like to get uh, more specific insights, you can simply export this graph into your Infranodus by clicking here. Um, then it's going to import this text here, next, and then it visualizes it, and then you can use these advanced insights from analytics in the main version of Infranodus in order to jump further. If you don't see all the options, just click to the advanced mode here, and then you will see all the 
options available, including statistics, sentiment and so on. So this is how it works. I hope you enjoy this demonstration. Let me know if you have any, any questions in the comments to this video. And thank you very much for your attention.